structures that seeks to hinder and restrict the flow of God's spirit in the earth. Listen to me. When the flow is not right, the kingdom can never flourish. Right. Y'all all right? So we got to get the flow right. If we want to see awakening come to Mississippi, it's going to demand from us <clears throat> some things we didn't think we would ever have to pay. For some of us, it will cost us our dignity. Yeah. For all of us, it will cost us our pride. Amen. Here are the seven things I want to share with you. Number one, there's a Pharaoh spirit that we're about to pull down. A Pharaoh spirit is a governmental spirit that seeks to enslave the masses to a godless system that forces the nation to be dependent upon a governmental structure rather than upon the provision of Almighty God. It's a Pharaoh spirit. It's a spirit of man's government that wants to appease man through entitlement, but ultimately it's to enact control upon the masses. Yeah. Yeah. And to that Pharaoh spirit this morning, we remind that Pharaoh spirit over Mississippi yes. that God is about to send a Moses. <laughs> yeah. Moses came and he overthrew the spirit of Pharaoh. Everybody stand with me a minute. We're going to do a little bit of warfare. It's Friday morning. Everybody all right? You okay? All right. This, this is a God has in this house right now who needs to be in this house. So right now, Father, we bind the spirit of Pharaoh. Come on, say Father, we say in Mississippi that our dependence is not upon the government. Our dependence is upon Almighty God. We say, Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh. We say, Lord, you are my provider. We say, Lord, you give to us wisdom and revelation, peace and understanding. We say today, Father, we have been fed by the hand of man long enough. It's time that we be fed by the hand of Almighty God. So we break the spirit of Pharaoh off of this community, off of Picayune, off of Poplarville. Off of Hattiesburg, in the name of Jesus, off of the great state of Mississippi, we say to you, Mississippi, you will no longer be intrigued by the entitlement of a secular government, but you will bend your knee to the Almighty God, and the heavens of God will open over the state of Mississippi, and we will see supernatural provision miracles come businesses started in the name of Jesus we say Moses is coming come on let me declare right now Moses is coming he's coming baby he's coming he's coming we break that spirit up we say yeah we say that Derek is good we say to Mississippi, let my people go. We say to that spirit of Pharaoh, let my people go. We say to Mississippi, will not be the last, but you will be the first. Pharaoh must go. Moses, the spirit of Moses, come. Spirit of God that rested upon Moses come in the great state of Mississippi. Now, woo! Good, all right. All right hallelujah. Y'all be seated. We got six more to go. Hey, we got six, we got six more to go before we even start teaching. Hey, 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 here's what, here's what happened. Sometimes we come into a region and we begin to teach prophetic revelation without dealing with the, the strong man over the region. We're going we're gonna to deal with the strong man. Pharaoh's spirit, all right? Y'all ready for number two? You ready for the second one? 
Second one is a Goliath spirit. Ah. <laughs> a Goliath spirit is that warring spirit of the flesh that seeks to taunt, to intimidate, and to threaten us to war in the strength of our own flesh. But we say to that spirit of Goliath, there's a shepherd boy from yeah. the hills named David. And he's got five stones and a sling. Come on. And he's about to overthrow that spirit of Goliath. Yeah. Yeah. That spirit of Goliath is that strong, taunting, intimidating spirit that wants to rise up on our people that say, you have always been nothing. You will always be nothing. And if we aren't careful, what happens is, what, let me just tell you this. The stronghold of authority in your life, no, let me say this. The stronghold in your life determines the seat of authority in your life. Wow. And there are a lot of people that want to look at Mississippi uh -huh. as a spirit of Goliath that says, you know what? You've never been anything. Your right. family's never been anything. Right. Right. You've always been poor. You've always been this. You've always been that. He wants to. I'm from Kentucky. I'm from Jennifer and I are from Kentucky. It's the same thing. Eastern Kentucky, you bunch of hillbillies. <laughs> You've always been this. You'll right. never be anything but that. The Spirit of God wants to intimidate, taunt, taunt, <laughs> tease, <laughs> cause you to be fearful, and to buy into the lie. That things in Mississippi will always be as they are right now. That's right. I got something to tell y'all. Oh. David's about to show up in this yeah. valley. He's going to start swinging some stones, and there's yeah. going to be some giants come down. I want to know are there any giant slayers in the house? Yeah. I want to know that who's going to be willing to stand up and say, I'll be like a shepherd boy. I'll grab me a stone and a sling, and I'll be going to say, Not God. I will bring that giant. Come on, everybody get up. We're going to do a Goliath right now. Father, we say right now in the name of Jesus, you spirit of Goliath, we pull you down in the state of Mississippi. Woo! Hey! We say David did not overcome Goliath by the wisdom of the flesh, by the warfare of the flesh. He overcame by the strategy of the spirit of God. And listen to me, sometimes God will tell you to do something that makes absolutely no sense to everybody around you. But if you wait to get their approval, you will miss the open window of opportunity in your life. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we find that spirit of Goliath. We say Mississippi will no longer be intimidated, taunted, mistreated, threatened. Come on! You with me. Everybody take your, begin to do your hand like this. Begin to say, watch this right here. I'm going to become a giant slave. Come on, begin to say that right now. Here's what I hear. Here's what I see. Here's what I hear. Here's what I hear. Here's what I hear. Here's what I hear the Holy Ghost saying. Mississippi has not yet had her miraculous breakthrough because we keep trying to war in the flesh to bring about a movement in the spirit. The only way you bring about a movement in the spirit, something in you has got to die. Something in us has got to die. If not, we're going to always repeat the old patterns that we have become comfortable. Bind that spirit of Goliath. Yes. I say, Mississippi, you're going to become a state of giant slaves. Yes. 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 We got five more to go. We ain't got time to play. Wow. Are y'all all right? Yeah. yeah. Look, if you, if you don't want to write these down, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make a copy of this, Lee, and I'll just put them, maybe if uh, Pastor David will give us permission. I'll make a copy of this and we'll just set it back on that table this evening. And if y'all would like to grab one, you can see all seven of them. <coughs> all right? Yes. So that way, 
you don't have to worry about trying to write it down, but you can process in the spirit what's exactly. happening Amen. rather than trying to journal right now. Then you can take this and a journal out of that from what the spirit of God has shown you, okay? <clears throat> then, all right, here's number three. There's a Nebuchadnezzar spirit that's got to be dealt with. Wow. Wow. I mean, what's this right here? A Nebuchadnezzar spirit is a religious spirit. I ain't no religion in Mississippi, is it? Uh, a Nebuchadnezzar spirit is a religious spirit that wars through the power of false religion, false testimony, false authority, and the intimidation of consequences for loyalty to convictions and to beliefs. A spirit of religion will never let a true manifestation of unity and loyal come forth. Pastors can't walk together because a spirit of Nebuchadnezzar right. wants to keep them divided because my platform is more wow. important to me than my relationship with you. Wow. Wow. So pastors and leaders end up in false humility and false arrogant pride rather than humble ourselves to one another and give ourselves to one another. If we're not careful, we end up trying to rule in a spirit of religion and pride that produces disloyalty and disunity. As long as God can keep people divided, as long as the enemy can keep people divided, yeah. Yeah. he will always keep the masses in chaos. Amen. Wow. That's right. The commanded blessing of God flows where the unity of the brothers is. Let me tell you something about that Nebuchadnezzar. God is about to send a Daniel who is praying in the upper window. And Daniel begins to say, I'm not bowing my knee. He begins to say to Nebuchadnezzar, O king, be it known unto thee today. Let everybody know today. Uh -huh. That our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Right. But even if he don't, I'm not bowing to thee. Amen. We Come on need a now. Daniel to yeah. arise yeah. Yeah. in the Amen. state of Mississippi. Come on. Yes. We need a Daniel who is relentless. We need a Daniel yes. who is yes. courageous. We need a Daniel yes. who will say, I will not be intimidated by the lion's den. Throw me in there, brother, if you want, because the Spirit of God will keep yes. me safe. Right now, we're going to pull down that spirit of Nebuchadnezzar. Everybody stand up right now. Wow. Father, we break off a spirit that divides in the state of Mississippi. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Right now, I feel this in my spirit. I feel it in my spirit. See, we're opening the gate for a supernatural weekend. We're opening the gate for a miracle in Mississippi. And so right now, you Nebuchadnezzar spirit, you spirit that wants to divide, you spirit that wants to cause men to be disloyal to one another, you gossiping, slandering, negative, foul mouth spirit, we find you over the state of Mississippi, and we say right now, there's a downer in the upper window, and he's praying over Mississippi, and he's saying right now, oh, keep we will not bow. We pull that down in the name of Jesus. We pull that down in the name of Jesus. We say the spirit of religion will not control our state. If all your apostle is worried about is his percentage of the check, you need to find you another apostle. You go ahead and say that right there. You go ahead and say that right there. You can't walk with somebody you ain't got relationship with. Be wary of those ministers who always affix to themselves a title higher than the one they're willing to put on you. What's going on? I'm just telling y'all right now. 
Spirit of Nebuchadnezzar, man. He wants to rule. He wants to intimidate. He wants religion to flourish. He wants to build a big, big old idol unto himself. 90 feet high. And say, look how great I am. Daniel says, I ain't power man. Come on, y'all. Y'all don't even. I'm not even. See, here's what you don't know. God sent me to this place. I responded to an invitation, but God sent me to this place because he's about to do something in Mississippi like we ain't never seen before. I'm just saying, be free from all that mess. I'm, I'm just telling you. Glory. Glory. Wow. Y'all all right? All right, y'all go ahead and sit down. We, see, all we're doing right now is we're just opening the gate. Right. Yeah. Opening the gate, clearing the way. Amen. Some men of God are coming in here today. And tonight, there's going to be some pastors gathered. You and I right now, all we're doing is we're, we're going along. We're, I mean, we're, we're just going along clearing the debris out of the roadway. Glory. For the king of glory wow. to make an entrance into Mississippi. Yes. He's coming right now. He's coming right now. Part of the reason why our plans never prevail is because they're inspired by the flesh, controlled by religion. Yeah. And the Spirit of God says, I want to find some pure hearted. Yea, even the Lord would say, I want to find some virgins among me who will abandon themselves to all others and hear the strategy that I'm releasing. Yes. And they will release that in the earth. Uh, uh. Number four. I got a, aren't you glad the Lord didn't give me 12 of these? <laughs> Number four. Number four is the Ahab spirit. Uh -huh. Oh, y'all know where we're going right now. An Ahab spirit is a spirit that gives authority to Jezebel to operate with violence wrapped in the alluring veil of seduction. It's all of those people that love you to you. They smile uh -huh. in your face all the time. They want to take your place. That's right. yeah. Part of what I part of what I had in here is I journaled a conversation that I had with Pastor John Kilpatrick of Brownsville Revival, and he listed for me fifteen things that must happen in revival awakening. Fifteen things. One of those was. Revival will never be led by a committee. Yeah. There's got to be somebody who can say yes. There's got to be somebody who can say no. But the enemy has, spent, has sent a spirit of Ahab. And that spirit of Ahab empowers Jezebel. It's people who love you to your face, but their intentions are really violent behind you. They want to take over your ministry. They want to take over your class. They want to take over your teaching. They want to take over your song. They want to take. They want to take it over. They want to overthrow the influence of your revelation because they've got none of their own. Wow! I, <laughs> this is a little heavy for a Friday morning, ten o'clock. But we're going to go there. Here's what we're going to tell Jezebel: You better, you better check yourself right now. You better check yourself right now, Ahab, because uh, Elijah is coming. Yeah. Yes. Elijah is going to be released over hey. this city. Come on, everybody, get up right now. Spring on your feet. We call upon the Holy Ghost of God that rested upon Elijah to come again upon the men of God. Come again upon the women of God. Let us be fearless. Let us be courageous. Let us be bold as a lion. seduced in Mississippi to a line controlling manipulative spirit of Ahab. We say right now, Ahab, we pull you down off of Mississippi in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
We release the spirit of Elijah upon the land. Yes, Lord. Woo! Release the spirit of Elijah who outran the chariot to Jezreel. Who commanded the heavens to be shut up and get no rain for three and a half years. Who called down the fire of God. We release the spirit of Elijah. And I want to say to you, Mississippi, this morning, you are more than you think you are. Yes. And I want to say to every man and woman in this room, you are more than you think you are. I don't care what your apostle has said, or your bishop has said, or your district superintendent has said, or this person or that person has said. I say to you what God says over you. And that is that he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. Number five. Y'all go ahead, Zinnin. Spirit of Jer Jeroboam. Spirit of Jeroboam. Spirit of Jeroboam. Watch this now. I get this. It's a spirit of religion that manifests itself Inconvenience and mediocrity that always births an Asher Banapal spirit that manifests in the natural as a spirit of poverty and lack. We're going to break poverty off of Mississippi. Yes, yes. Wow. There's a spirit of Jeroboam. It is a religious, manipulative, controlling spirit yeah. that wants to bring people under a system that allows them the convenience yeah. of mediocrity. Right. That allows them the complacency the convenience of complacence. It's the lure of a system. Yeah, yeah. That wants to make people more dependent upon their check uh -huh. rather than their God. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It's that spirit that wants us to believe everybody should just be able to stay at the house and draw a check. Yeah. It's a spirit of entitlement. Uh -huh. It's a spirit of complacency. It's a spirit of mediocrity. But it's rooted anciently into a spirit of Jeroboam that will always birth an Asher Banapal spirit that will bring us into a spirit of slavery. What we need in America. It's not a revolution in the natural. What we need in America is an awakening of the Spirit of God that yeah. will produce in the land the spirit of liberty and freedom again in our nation that will entrust to men and women the responsibility and the dream of you determining your own destiny and becoming all that God wants you to be. Yes. Yes. Oh, the nations of the earth have always been most threatened by a free people That's right. who have the courage to determine their own destiny. Governmental structures and systems in the earth have always sought a way to become the father of the family, to become the provider. In the Bible, the concept of the father literally means the source so the government wants to become the father of the people. Yeah. Replacing our heavenly father yeah. so that the government becomes the source of everything. But the spirit of the Lord says, you know what? I'm going to release a spirit uh -huh. Come on. of Josiah. <laughs> and he will enact a reformation in the land. Thank you. He's going to begin to pull down some altars and burning some stuff. Yeah, well, He's going yeah. to begin to get at the courthouse square and release a word that's going to shift the community. Wow. Yeah. Come on, everybody stand up with yeah. me. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pull down that spirit of Jeroboam 
we pull out that spirit of religion. We say to you right now, that spirit that wants to be made convenient, mediocre, average, routine. Listen to me. If you're wanting a revival, but yet you want to stay convenient, it ain't going to happen. If we want awakening in America, and we believe we're going to stay mediocre in the process of it, the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm about to send the Spirit of Josiah, the Spirit that rested upon Josiah. God, give us some politicians in Mississippi that will be men and women and curve and purpose and destiny and righteousness and holiness in the land. Give us some pastors. Hey, Lord, let's let a Let the new court be for the land, Lord. Let it be released. Woo! Hey. Josiah. God is birthing an awakening in this nation. It's going to produce a reformation unlike we've ever seen in our life. Part of the reason why we need the teacher anointing in the body of Christ is we need men and women of God who have the wisdom and the revelation inside of the Holy Ghost and the word of the Lord that can release to us the principles of Josiah that will bring about within us a transformation here that we might birth a reformation out here. Transformation always begins yeah. here. Always. Always. Y'all be seated just for a minute. Listen to me. If you're trying to transform your family, your church, your community, or our nation, if we're trying to transform something in this into being something that we've never been transformed into being ourselves. We will be found to be false prophets. You can't produce what you're not. Part of the problem with politicians is they say one thing and they do another. Because their heart is not sold out to the principles that they want to represent in order to get votes. Spirit of the Lord is going to release the spirit of reformation. It's going to come through awakening. And God's going to use some really unusual people. I was born and raised in the Church of the Nazarene. Church of the Nazarene is a conservative, evangelical, holiness church who the gifts of the Spirit, the work of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is manifest only in one thing, and that is a righteous, holy living. So it became incredibly a religious culture where the way you dress is more important than how you act. The whole structure of religion. It's what it always, it's what it always does to us. See, religion, I love this right here. Religion, religion is like a flu shot. A flu shot, they really take the live flu virus and inject it into your body. But they give you a small enough dose of it that you don't really catch the real thing. Religion gives you just enough of it yeah. so that you won't be infected by the real thing. Amen. Amen. Ooh, good. Amen. And somehow we need to understand that the Spirit of God is going to release the Spirit of, yeah. of the Reform. The Spirit that rested upon Josiah is coming to Mississippi. Watch for a politician that's going to be a reformer. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be courageous. And he'll catch all manner of slander, or she will, for it. Or watch for her when she's coming. When she's coming. I just read about this missionary in the Church of Nazareth. Church of Nazareth doesn't believe in tongues, don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit as you and I may understand them. But they got a missionary that's just. Sometimes denominations will tolerate their ministers to do things in other nations they can't get by with here. It was a Nazarene missionary in Northern Africa who felt like he was supposed to take some Bibles up to a communist prison camp. 
that was run, the prison had been overtaken by, by, by forces within Islam and Muslims, and it had become a very harsh, brutal place. He felt like he was supposed to carry a Bible. So he gets up to the gate, and they ask him what he's doing, and he said, the Lord, the Holy Ghost, told him to bring some Bibles to get to the prison. Well, that wasn't going to happen. So what they decided to do was, because he came up there with Bibles in his hand, they decided that they were going to persecute him. So they took this missionary, and they had a brick oven that was there, where they would make clay pots, pottery, that kind of thing. And so to torture him for bringing a Bible on the ground, they took this missionary and they stuck his arm inside of this brick oven, several hundred degrees, put his arm inside of the brick oven. The whole time his arm was in the oven, he never cries, never screams, never hollers, never yells. They left it in there for about 30 seconds, pulled it out, and the hair on his arm was perfectly unsinged. Wow. Yeah. So the guys totally freak out. And this time they put his arm back in there for a few minutes. Pulled it out. The hair on his arm is not even singed. They opened up the gate, let him bring the Bible in. <laughs> sometimes doors are not open to us because we're not really packing what we're professing and we're not packing what we're professing because we want everybody to be transformed but me Yeah. or we make excuse or believe that I'm not that bad at all others need it worse than Okay, we gotta get this done. What time is it? What time y'all? <laughs> Look here, if, if y'all get tired, I guess you can just get it to home. I, I gotta do these two more and then we'll go move on. Number six is an Ahaz spirit. Ahaz. An Ahaz spirit is a spirit that is always floundering resources because of a lack of faith, produces no fruit in the field. The Lord would say to you, Mississippi, I'm about to set your fields on fire. Yes! <laughs> Things that you've been seed that you've planted years ago that you've given up on ever benefiting from the fruit of, that seed back then is going to begin to bear fruit now. Hear me now. That Ahaz spirit wants to put us into a place where we're always floundering because we're always living in a spirit of lack. <clears throat> it's not more resources we need. Hello? The Holy Ghost of the Lord God Almighty who created heavens and the earth lives on the inside of you. He made the gold mines, the coal mines, right. the heavens, the earth, the wind, the sea. All of the resources therein belong to him and he's taken up camp on the inside of you. And he said, if any two of you shall agree, it shall be done. Why are we living in the promise of plenty always floundering for the lack of one. Why? Why? I believe part of the reason why is because we've subjected ourselves through fear to a spirit of Ahaz who controls and manipulates the thoughts of our minds so that here our mind is never renewed as Romans 12, 1 and 2 reminds us that our minds be renewed, our minds are not renewed, and therefore we end up in a poverty mindset living here always in the spirit of lack. 
So somebody says, can you? Well, I don't have the money to go. I don't have the resources to do We'd love to do an outreach, but we don't have the money for it. Listen to me. The problem is not the lack of resources. Come on. Right. <laughs> the problem is the spirit of Ahaz always wants to keep our mind <coughs> twisted up as though God cannot really meet our need. Yeah. Yeah. I got something to tell Ahaz. Come on. And that is Isaiah. <laughs> is about to tie the tails of the foxes together uh -huh. and yeah. burn like fire to the fields. And there's a new harvest coming. There's a new bounty coming. There's a new provision yeah. coming. Everybody get up with me one more time. We find the spirit of Ahaz off the land and we say right now in the name of Jesus that provision is coming. Go ahead and begin to declare right now provision is coming. Finances are coming. Houses are coming. Lands are coming. God's going to provide. God's going to provide. God's going to provide. God will provide all of your needs according to his riches in glory. It's either the word of God or it's not. So we bind that spirit of Ahab. Of Ahaz, and we say right now, Isaiah is coming to judge your unbelief and prophesy the, the coming of the Emmanuel manifest. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah. 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 Lord, this land belongs to you. Mississippi belongs to you. This is your land. You made her beautiful. You made her land beautiful. You made her waterways beautiful. The greatest river in our nation is named after Mississippi. How we declare right now in the name of Jesus that there's a new flow coming through Mississippi. We say new provision is being released in Mississippi. We say creative, entrepreneurial spirit released in Mississippi. We say right now, money's just going to show up where you didn't even think money could come. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say spirit that rested upon Isaiah, come and judge our unbelief. Alright, go with me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Alright, be seated. One more. One more. <coughs> we break off a hair of yeah. I know you y'all I know y'all are getting tired. I know you I, I know you are. I'm just saying right now, what we're doing right now is we are opening gates yeah. up over Mississippi. Yeah. 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 Okay, People can blow through Mississippi, and I'm not in any way, I, I I hope that I've already demonstrated to you that we carry, Jennifer and I carry a a Tremendous respect for the prophetic word that is released in our life. We govern it, we steward it, we record it, we rehearse it, we memorize it, we read it, we give it to our intercessors, we give it to our shield uh, intercessors who pray for us all the time in Pensacola. Those people that we relate to, we give them the word. They help us govern that word. Yeah. Let me tell you something. It's not enough to come to a region, a territory, a church, or a house, or a nation, and prophesy foolishly yeah. without counting the cost right. to steward such a word in a region or in a territory. We have to understand when somebody gives, I, I told Dutch, man, <coughs> so listen to me. I'm kind of tired of bringing you to my church. Part of the reason is, is he always gives me a prophetic word. 
And the prophetic word for me has come to a place where all it means is it just means more work. <laughs> it takes work to govern a word. Yeah. Y'all not hearing me? Yeah. Yeah. See, what we think we can do, we think we can have a man or woman of God prophesy over us and we don't have to do anything but just sit back and wait for that word to come. I'm sorry right. if you're that way, but I guarantee you if you are, most of the words that have been prophesied of you have not been realized in your life because we've not taken on the responsibility to steward them. And to steward them means work. Yeah. A prophetic word, somebody gave Jennifer and I a word picture years ago. A prophetic word is like a lifeline that's thrown to us yes. that we just keep pulling right. ourselves to. Yes. Just keep pulling myself to it. All right, the last one is this spirit of Harry. A spirit that seeks to imprison and slaughter babies, preventing them from coming yeah. into the destiny of their life. The spirit knows when he is judged and crushed his stone will be cast down. A Herod spirit. A Herod spirit is a spirit that becomes so intimidated by the promise of the generation who's coming after us. Right. Come on. That rather than to empower them, we cut them off. We, right. we sever them. Yes. In every great move of God, one of the things that's happened prior to that is a radical abandonment of the previous generation. Mm -hmm. well, let me tell you something. Come on. Herod has not killed all of them. <coughs> America's responsible for killing nearly 60 million babies. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that? 60 million. Think about all of these years. How many more of those little sons and daughters would have produced way beyond the 60 million? Souls lost, destroyed. I don't mean lost as in, in hell. I believe the prevenient grace of God absolutely redeems that mankind and brings them into a redemptive glory of God in ways that we could not even imagine or comprehend this side of eternity. Right. I want to say to that Herod spirit, Messiah is coming. Yeah. Jesus is coming. Yes. Yes. You'll not kill them all. Listen to me. No. Jennifer and I, our eldest son, we just turned our church over to him. Him and his wife have been married over seven years. They can't have babies. She hasn't been able to conceive. I'm not going to say they cannot have babies. They will have babies of their own natural birth. We believe that. They've been married over seven years. This is the year of Jubilee. All right? Yeah. And what happens with us? Without going through the whole story, they were supernaturally, we think, picked off of a list, given, shown their profile, a little girl over in Louisiana, and who ends up, this little girl goes to a clinic to have an abortion, gets there, they tell her she's pregnant with twins. She begins to cry. The person in the abortion clinic begins to counsel her that there may be another way that she could adopt the babies out. Short story long, his little mother ends up giving birth to two of the most beautiful little precious baby girls ever upon the earth. <laughs> and the mom is Mexican and the dad is African American. And me and Jennifer are Mimi and Poppy. Come on. And my son and his wife took them into our home we didn't just get one baby in the year two, believe we went ahead and got two. Amen. Yeah. Two of the most beautiful Amen. little baby girls you've ever seen in your life. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life spoiling them and loving on them and kissing on them. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Herod ain't got them all, honey. Yeah, thank you. The abortion doctors haven't gotten them all. There's a generation, there's a destiny laying in the hearts of these children to do more radical exploits than you and I have ever dreamed of. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes. Come on, let's stand up. We're going to do it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say you spirit Herod that wants to profit through abortion and the needless slaughter of unborn babies in Mississippi. 
we say right now that Mississippi will not be known for its death. It will be known for its life in the name of Jesus. And Father, we release right now the power of the Holy Ghost to overthrow these seven spirits over Mississippi. And I believe over this nation. But we release that in the name of Jesus. And we say right now, Mississippi, you are coming into a miraculous season. We say right now, there's a miracle in Mississippi. We say right now, we speak to the promise of a Mississippi miracle. And Father, we release the glory of God. Let it be released, God. And tear down this Babylonian system. My God, let that be released. Generation, God, let it rise up. Yes, God. Thank you, God, that you have a new generation, God. All right. All right, I want y'all to be seated. Somebody tell me what time it is. Tell me what time it is. Don't worry about it. 12 05. 12 05. Okay. I know that the mind can only absorb, but the seat can endure. <laughs> and we're not <clears throat> going to keep y'all here much longer, but we're in a moment, we're in a window that <laughs> I knew this is what I was supposed to do, though I, though if I were the only one standing in this room, because you and I may sit here and we may think, there's not enough of us in this immediate gathering to enact any significant change in the great state of Mississippi or even in the city of Picayune. But what you don't know when the word of the revelation goes out by the Holy Ghost, there may be a pastor <coughs> 20 miles from here who's sitting in his den and suddenly begins to say, oh, what's that? <laughs> Now, let me let me say let me say this to you. Because I'm taking I, I, I'm I'm gonna do two things here. I'm gonna do it quickly. I want to encourage you just for a moment regarding strategy. I have appreciated so much Brother Casey and David and Derek, who all Mar whoever's whoever's all involved in this, of what you're trying to do throughout the state of Mississippi. And it's just awesome. And we praise God for that. And I believe that the wind of the Spirit is going to begin to blow in Mississippi in a way that's just going to make every effort we do exponentially increase in effectiveness. One of the things I love and one of the things that I think we must do, listen, I was, like I told you, I was raised in the church of Nazareth. Church of Nazareth believes in angels as long as you don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you understand know, so what I'm saying? We believe in angels, but don't talk about seeing them. All right? Uh, that's what they believe in. They love that. And I grew up with no real appreciation for angels at all. I believe that they existed somewhere, flying around, but no real impact in my own life until I was sitting in Buenos Aires, Argentina in a Carlos Anacondia crusade, Sergio Scatabrini, uh, Claudio Frazen, all these people that led the great Argentine revival still do. It was that trip that I gathered with over a million people because these men had called for a prayer gathering in the nation's capital. Together with a million people praying in the Holy Ghost all morning. Those people, they don't do it like we do it. They just go all in. But one time when I was there at the church, sitting, and I saw in front of me this tremendous angel. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. And I'm not going to go through it, but this angel lit, hoisted up this sword. And when I hoisted up this sword, 
out of the sword comes this amazing fan in both directions of the flags of the nation. Oh. And I begin to inquire of the Lord because I was totally blown away. I begin to inquire of the Lord, who is this? What is this? This, by the way, would have been, we were there <coughs> over September 11, 2001. I was in that conference. I had this Bible with me. And on the morning of September 11, Carlos, uh, no, uh, Betty Frazen, who is Claudio's wife, asked for the church where we're at. She told all of us on that day that we needed to take our Bibles and write down in the cover of our Bibles where we were at the day the world changed. She said, there's been a strike today at the heart of the world. When you return to your nation, at the time, we were told it'd be at least 30 days before we could come back to the state. She said, when you return, it may look the same, but fears are shifting. You must always remember where you were the day the world changed. So I wrote that in this Bible. This is old Bible about worn out and beat up. Do some things you just can't get rid of. But in that conference is when I saw this angel, these flags. And I inquired of the Lord what, what, what was this angel? And the Lord ministered to me that it was the angel of strategy for the releasing of awakening and revival in the earth. I didn't fully understand or know what all that meant at the time. But um, that angel is still here. I don't even understand it. But so much of my life has totally shifted since I had that encounter with the Lord. There. If we dream about what God do, might do among us, <clears throat> but we don't learn to discipline our dream into a strategy. Our dream may just remain a dream. Right. I don't want my dreams of the kingdom to remain a dream. Right. I believe God gives to us revelation through dreams and visions for the purpose that we might rightly govern them and steward them and bring them by the will of the Father through the power of the Holy Ghost, bring them into reality. I believe what the Lord shows us, He intends on bringing to pass. Amen. Or He shows us for a reason. So, give me just a minute. Strategy exists. Only, and, and again, if you want these notes, I'll just make the notes for you and give them to you. I don't care. Strategy exists only in as much as the end results that we desire coincide <coughs> with the revelation of the Father previously released. So what we have to do in Mississippi is we have to begin to enact a strategy. I believe that's what Casey and all these other guys are doing. They're saying, listen, we'll go all over the state, we'll spark fires, we'll do this, we'll do that. But the Spirit of the Lord has got to begin to release strategy. Strategy provides authority for you to both receive and achieve our very best future. Before Mississippi can be shaped into being more beautiful in the image of God, somebody's got to see it, dream it, envision it, yeah. and begin to put a plan together by the Holy Ghost, right. how to bring that to pass. By the will of the Father. If we have established no strategy for our future, now watch this. If we have encounters, dreams, visions, revivals, outpourings, if we have all of that, but never discipline that, 
was a Holy Ghost strategy yeah. to carry it outside of this room and into the community, then our dream may very well just remain a dream. Right. That's good. And the same people begin to gather time after time after time in this building or any other building, right, on. keep on dreaming about what God's doing and not really ever implementing the strategy for him to bring it to pass. That's good, man. Listen to this. We position ourselves to become suspect to the rising up and the establishing of an alternative strategy. Anytime God calls you to do something and we don't do it, we create a void in the spirit that will allow for an inferior spirit yeah. to rise up in what you did not do right. and he will do what you were supposed to do but in a perverted or distractful way. Uh, yeah. Does that even make sense? Absolutely. Listen to me. When God calls me to do something and I do it, I fill a place conjoining together heaven and earth. Right. But if God calls me to do something and I don't do it, I've created a vacuum or a void for an alternative spirit or force or person to rise up and do it That's good. in a different way. Anyway. We need the strategy of God. Strategy is not simply planning, but strategy is analyzing, projecting, directing, leading by the wisdom of the Holy Ghost a community, a region, or state, or nation into a much better place. Let me say this to you. Your strategy determines your perspective. Your strategy determines your position. Your strategy determines your plan. <coughs> your strategy determines your pattern. Strategy literally in the, in the Greek is made up of two words. One is stratos, which means army, and ago, which means leading, guiding, or moving a mighty army. I'm praying that the Spirit of God will raise up men and women in Mississippi who by the Holy Ghost will analyze, project, yeah. direct, lead, and move as a mighty army of Amen. God all throughout the state of Mississippi. Yeah. Amen. Ever since I saw the angel in Argentina, I've seen that angel one other time in Pensacola. That one encounter, I didn't realize then, <coughs> was become a gateway in the spirit through which I would enter into other encounters with the Lord that would really radically shift our whole life. I don't know if y'all know, you, you know, this last week they had the CPAC convention down there in Florida. And CPAC is the Con Conservative Political Action Committee. All these candidates, conservative candidates, went and spoke at this Political Action Committee. Well, I just had somebody again last night text me and say, could you believe on the stage of CPAC this year, they had an appeal to heaven flag. Yeah. 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 <laughs> on the Glory. stage. How in the world, how in the world does God give a man a dream, much less that man being me, who am absolutely, who am absolutely the least among the brethren. How could God give the man a dream and through that dream and the ministry of others that flag literally be carried as a message of hope all over the world? Yeah. You would not believe all the places I've had pictures sent to me of that flag. From the plains of Nineveh, northern Iraq, to Mount Everest, to the well and well of Jerusalem, to 
Brazil, the nations of the earth, all <coughs> the political candidates, from Huckabee to Cruz to Palin, to all holding the flag. Uh, so it's being posted in the rotunda of the nation's capital of Washington, D.C. until Bishop Harry Jackson was forced to remove it because the federal government found offensive the first flag that ever officially flew in this nation. How, how do you, how does a dream become reality? I don't know, we're trying to do some writing on that now. But the truth of the matter is this. We must allow the Holy Ghost to begin to release to us. Now, here's what I mean by that. Here's what I mean by that. Sometimes we say phrases that sound good and religious. It's like, okay, what's that mean? Did you hear what I just said? We got to allow it to be released to us. What does that mean? It just means this. Every little act of obedience you take becomes the quantifier for the release of God's glory in a greater measure. That is released through us. His glory is released through us when we choose to be obedient to him in the little things and in the This weekend is significant. I'm here because Casey invited me. I love Casey. And I'm here because the Holy Ghost has given to us an assignment. To be here. I'm here. <coughs> but the Spirit of the Lord is about to do something among us that we've just never seen. Yeah. 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 And so many dreams and visions and hopes and aspirations that we've had, we've carried for years on the inside of us. And sometimes, you know, let's be honest, sometimes we live frustrated lives because we feel like we've had more prophesied over us than what's actually been realized over us. And sometimes we've dreamed bigger dreams than we've seen come true and had bigger visions and all that. But the Spirit of the Lord is releasing over Mississippi, as we dealt with these spirits, the Spirit of the Lord is now opening up a door, and He's going to begin to give to the ministers, to the leaders, men and women, He's going to begin to give to them visions and dreams, it's going to begin to release strategy, and you must obey when He says do this. Yeah. Hear me? And as we obey, the strategy will become clearer, the way will become plainer, and the fruit will become much more ridiculous. And they, here's what I want to do this morning. I just want to, I just want to close because y'all are probably wanting to go to show enough barbecue or something. Y'all ever been to show enough barbecue? barbecue? I come to pick you in for two reasons. One of them is show enough. For show. Oh, show. Sure. <laughs> so, a few weeks ago, here, a bottle of oil. Tell you about this oil first. Uh huh. This is this oil here. This oil here was a. Uh, this was actually the, the bottle of oil. This is, this is the actual container, not just the oil. But this is the actual bottle of anointing oil that they used all during the Brownsville Revival. This oil in here is oil from the Brownsville Revival. A few weeks ago, Jennifer and I were in Virginia Beach, and Charles Parham, <coughs> who, by the way, was the man who was a spiritual dad to William Seymour, Charles Parham was the man who sent William Seymour to Los Angeles. Charles Parham was the man who financed the Azusa Street, the Azusa Revival. His granddaughter, who's probably now near 90 years old, came up to me at a meeting in Virginia Beach. And she gave to me, I'll spare you all the details, but she gave me a little vial of oil. 
that had been preserved in her family line from the time of Azusa. So she gave me some anointing oil that was her grandfather's from Azusa. That's pretty cool. I ran through most of it just like it was wild, just like I could get more of it. Finally, I took, I took some of that oil and I poured it into this box. Because part of what the Spirit of the Lord is doing is there is a synergy is developing and the Spirit of the Lord is releasing a greater glory in our day. It's coming. It's coming. And we can either be wounded and hurt, bitter, sitting on the sideline, or we can die to ourselves Repent, humble ourselves, reconcile, love, and lead on. And that's what I'm praying for all of y'all this morning. So what I want to do is I want to take just a minute, and I'm not going to pray or I'm not going to prophesy over each one of us here this morning. But what I would like to do is for everybody who would, I want Jennifer to come help me. And I just want to ask you to line up here. And we're just going to come by. Marvin's like, I ain't missing. I ain't missing. I ain't missing. I, I, I want us to just go by, and we're just going to ask for a move of the Spirit of God for awakening and transforming revival, the synergy of the ages to be released in your life. Yes. And that the Spirit of the Lord would give to us great strategy. Yes. So in this one bottle right here, is a mixture of oil from oil used in the Azusa Street Revival and the oil that was used in Brownsville Revival. The bottle from Brownsville itself. I didn't steal it, by the way. And y'all, it was given to me. So Jennifer and I just want to go by and all we're going to do is anoint you with oil in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we're going to pray the same thing over every one of you. And we're going to pray that right now. Father, Jennifer and I stand here in agreement. And we declare that in Mississippi, there is a miracle coming. Father, you told me this morning we were to open up the way, prepare the gate, deal with these strongholds. Release the promise of strategy and anoint the brothers and sisters with oil for supernatural breakthrough. So Father, Jennifer and I are just going to move down this line. We're going to take this oil and we're going to anoint each one of these persons in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We're anointing you with oil that is mixed from Azusa and Brown. Isn't that cool? It's really cool. I was just going to ask the Spirit of the Lord to release upon you the freshness of a new beginning and the fire of a new awakening. Yes. And that the glory of the Lord would be manifest. Yes. Thank you for him, Lord. We just give him just an abundance of oil and a whole mix. Strategy. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. The fire of Azusa and Brownsville be multiplied in you in the freshness of new awakening you begin. In Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we pray for the generations. Release the fire of awakening in Jesus' name. Fire of awakening in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we anoint you with this oil in Jesus' name. Fire of awakening. 
fire of transforming revival released in your life in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we anoint you with this oil. With the blended oils of Azusa and Brown, we anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We will wait for you to begin. Because we tell we anoint you with the oil of the synergy of the ages. Releasing the fire of awakening, supernatural provision, wisdom, strategy released in your life in the name of Jesus. The fire of awakening, come, come. Eric, we just anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And we pray right now just for the fire of awakening, for the fire of the synergy of the ages to come. Burn upon the ages. Yeah. We take the oil of the Zeus and brown gold. Old moons and new moons create brand new outpourings of energy, Jesus. Coleman, Alabama, for the glory of the Lord. Marvel, we anoint you with oil, and then the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Lord, manifest your glory. Father, even as they go to Bobby Bray in a few weeks, and even as they go to this place, we pray you release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of awakening. In the name of Jesus, bless the Lord. We anoint you with oil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Release the fire of generational outpourings and awakenings in the name of Jesus. I say Mississippi shall be saved. In the name of Jesus. We anoint you with oil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Rain down upon my sister, Father. Fresh outpourings and revivals and awakenings. Strategy, provision in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. We're still today, I pray. Still today. Promise of the Father. Release strategy, provision, knowledge, wisdom, revelation to know what to do. Set the fields on fire. Anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Fresh out pour, revive, awaken in the name of Jesus. For Mississippi. For Mississippi. For Mississippi. Anoint you with oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Woo! In the name of Jesus. Greater level, greater level, greater level. Father, right now, anoint her with oil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. What's your name? She's beautiful. We thank you, Lord, for her. We thank you for every wonderful, beautiful thing you've got locked up on the inside of her and her generation. Raise her up to be mighty and useful. She's beautiful and we love her and thank you for her. For Dad, we pray. Mighty up. Mighty up. Mighty up. Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Strategy, wisdom, thank you, Jesus. Freedom, 
joy, provision, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Right now, anoint my brother with oil, and then the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I pray, Father, you'd release upon his life fresh outpourings and encounters, visions and dreams. Woo! Revival and awakening in Mississippi and beyond. Thank you, Lord. Anoint you in oil right now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Pour out upon our Father. Visions, dreams, Counters the Holy Ghost, supernatural provision for awakening and transforming our lives. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We bless you. Father, I thank you for Brother David. I love this man. I thank you for him. Such a good, godly man. I pray you bless him today. Brother David, I anoint you with oil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I just pray the Lord just wash you, bathe you, cleanse you with the oil of gladness. Every season of sorrow and pain of rejection or division or people have been disloyal to you, broken off of your life in the name of Jesus. And I say right now, awakening is inside of you. We release it from Mississippi in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're so awesome. Thank you all for being here.